The Olympics was originally the athletic summit of peace between nations and cultures. It turns out that the latest edition has been anything but. Now, originally this piece was supposed to be titled A Tale of Two Games to reflect the problems that are present at both the Paris Olympics and Jimmy Donaldson's Beast Games. If you know, Jimmy Donaldson is Mr. Beast. And he has a lot of shit to sat- settle at this point. And with the latter already mentioned in some kind of detail by mainstream media, including an initial article by Vital Vegas and a semi-hit piece from the New York Times. And come to think of it, all of YouTube is against him right now. It seems prudent that we set it as- aside for th- Uh, for this one and focus on the former and with that said we can safely say that the situation at the olympics is just pretty bad dumpster fire bad and this is going to be uh our topic in this episode of the intrepid podcast which starts right now I am Ian Rignon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to another episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Now, there are many things to discuss about the Paris Olympics, but we need to focus on just three because I know that not all of you can pinpoint all of the sports that we have to uh, sort out. So, the main ones that we basically have... Uh, a good idea of a, at least for a little for a little um, <coughs> on a little or in a a very short um short minded or short minded scale for that matter i don't know if i'm sounding any um i don't know if i if i'm making any sense here uh there are three that we need to focus on first is the local shit show which can be quite literal the beef between the International Olympic Olympic Committee and the International Boxing Association, the IOC versus the IBA, and I and on and I have to basically just uh, edit that out for my Substack article. I haven't um, saw saw that uh, post uh, post prod or post uh, publishing. And finally, we're gonna de- we're gonna you know, uh, let's just say focus, uh, the latter half of this episode on the issue between, uh, Filipino gymnast and double gold medalist Carlos Yulo and his estranged mother. But first, let's start off with a local shit show that surrounds the Paris Olympics. Starting off with the opening ceremony, which is still being talked about as the games are about to end in a few days as of this recording or at, at, at the time that it uh, that this episode is released online, it is understood that some portions of Paris went dark right after the opening ceremony, which featured a drag act that was blasphemous or at least done in poor taste and bad faith. Now, a picture of the city went viral after the fact where only the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur de Montmartre sorry if I butchered uh, the French of that was left lit in what was called the City of Lights. And if it was a coincidence, it was a brutal one. Personally, I see it as a case of God issuing an FAFO notice to Parisians. FAFO means, or FAFO means, fuck around and find out. And the city of Paris just fucked around and found out that God cannot be mocked. That's what Christians like me are saying. And not just Christians, to be, uh, to be, to be frank, even Shia Muslims are, 
are outraged on this. I mean, what the hell, right? Now, prior to the games, the French government and society has been in shambles due to local unrests, including protests by farmers and police officers. Uh, farmers because of the food uh, and uh, European, European Union standards regarding uh, trade or food trade or whatever. And police officers, obviously, for their bonus pay as they keep the Paris Olympics secure. Now, the city of Paris has also been addressing the problems related to the Seine River, um, which is basically used uh, in some of the sporting events in the Paris Olympics, and a lot of athletes have, be have been sick, uh, have been fucking sick because they swam in the Seine. So that's a controversy in itself. Uh, there are also uh, problems relating to athlete accommodations as well as the need to become more sustainable than the previous Olympics. And we haven't touched yet the issue of athlete sustenance and security, but it was also bad. I mean, uh, national teams have to fly in chefs from their home country so that they can cook for their athletes. I mean, goodness gracious me, what the hell are the French thinking in organizing the Paris Olympics? What the hell, man? I don't know. Then, there's the issue regarding the fight between Algeria's Imane Khalif, who was proven to be an inter intersexual female with a higher than acceptable levels of testosterone, and Italy's Angela Carini, who withdrew from the match after less than a, m a minute in because she claimed that the punches she received from Khalif were above her tolerance point. Now, there is a wider perspective of this because this fight and many others Khalif and Taiwanese boxer Lin Yu Ting faced were a consequence of the falling out of relations between the IOC and the IBA whose president was a Russian oligarch with ties to Vladimir fucking Putin. I'm, now, I'm just a content creator with a major interest in history and a minor stake in geopolitics and pop culture, but it does not take a rocket scientist or even a journalist to say that it is a fucking can of worms indeed. On one hand, the IOC has been infiltrated by the DEI agenda, thus the hideous opening ceremony drag show that, unfortunately, was not condemned by the Vatican in the most extreme terms. And on the other... The IBA lost its credibility as the global boxing authority for allegedly being a Kremlin psyop despite sticking to its standards that women's sport should remain female. And I'm not even touching the shit show that is Ukraine for, the, uh, for crying out loud. So that's that. With that said, Filipino boxer Nesty Petesho, a silver medalist in Tokyo, should watch her ass for Lynn who was also in the same weight division as her because uh, it's been favored that Petesho and Lin would be uh, slugging it out for the championship fight for the 57 kilogram category, if I am not mistaken. Now, for the meat and potatoes of this uh, episode, we, we go to some drama. I know I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't. Uh, tackle this out and we should be celeb as a Filipino I should celebrate Carlos Yulos uh, victory double victory for that matter in gymnastics but I promise you this is the first and last time that I have to tackle about family issues regarding Carlos Yulo and his mom so hear me out we Filipinos really do not fucking learn from Nick Joaquin and his treatise on our tendency for smallness as the celebration for Yulo's double gold win was tainted with controversy, controversy thanks to his helicopter mother, Angelica. I'm not sure if it's Angelica or Angelica, but, you know, potato potato. It was revealed that Yulo and his mom had a fallout of relations ever since he dated Australia-based Filipino woman, 
Chloe San Jose. But prior to this, Angelica has been has allegedly been unsupported of her Olympian son for reasons I would not discuss out of respect for Yulo himself and the good guys in his family. But it does say something. It does say something. For starters, Angelica Yulo appears to be a narcissistic bitch with a love for the mula. But you know, kidding aside, my respect for Yulo and San Jose just skyrocketed when they uploaded a series of TikTok videos. I'm not sure if it's a series, but you know, TikTok is a short, uh, short length video app. So I guess it's a series of TikTok videos where they addressed the beef Yulo had with his mother. And at the end of it all, still chose to forgive her despite her hurting him psychologically. And I would also like to, uh, you know, um, uh, pay my highest respects as well for Yulo for being the short king that he is and for standing up for his girl. I mean, Kaloy, you better ask the question now. <laughs> If I were you. But normally, I would like to let irrelevant things like this pass out without tackling it. But the fact that the achievements of a person like Carlos Yulo has been tainted by controversy due to the alleged animosity of his mother just proves how petty, how fucking petty our interests are. As he won his two gold medals in the Paris Olympics, social media posts from his mother allegedly came out expressing disgust over her son's historic wins. However, the matter remains in question as there are claims that her online statements are, were allegedly fake. And if I am not mistaken, the cyclist uh, lawyer, attorney Raymond Fortun, uh, was asked to represent Angelica Yulo. And uh, that's the end of it. I think um, I'm, I'm not going to say anything else. I just wanted to uh, tell you that that's the, that's the thing that happened. I think that happened last night uh, as of this recording. Now, the fact that the media is tackling this just proves how petty we are as a people and the lengths we go through just to make a bloody opinion about things even if it is not required. Trust me, I am incriminating myself here. I'm guilty of it. Because I really don't want to talk about this, but this shit just happened. And I have to say something, okay? Because family matters should remain very personal and private, even if several of its members are publicly known. At the same time, those who are part of families who have public figures in them, and the public figures themselves for that matter, should abo avoid publicizing their dirty laundry to seek attention. But the bottom line is this. Carlos Yulo will be remembered in Philippine history as the first Filipino Olympian to win two gold medals in the same Olympic event. His mother, on the other hand, will eventually just become a footnote of it. I mean... His siblings are on their way to follow on his footsteps and I'm looking forward to his brother and his sister, uh, you know, exceeding what their kuya, what their older brother has done. I'm looking forward to it. Now, while we hope that this issue would be settled before legal action is taken, it is safe to say that the court of public opinion has sentenced Angelica Yulo to notoriety. Meanwhile, the issue between mother and son does not reveal does does reveal rather a clear and present danger to the Filipino family and the breakdown of the family structure. The dispute between Yulo and his mother could actually trigger a generational trend where Having no contact with one's parents over misunderstandings, financial or otherwise, is the norm rather than the exception, regardless of who is at fault. As we should know, Article 15 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution states that the Filipino family is, quote, the foundation of the nation, end of quote. Therefore, it is an imperative for us 
to help preserve this basic cell of society. It is important for us to understand that children are not investments and parents are not useless superiors. Both can be right at the same time. Now to conclude, allow me to quote Filipino educational content creator Laika Maravilla about this matter. He, uh, she started out with uh, this in Tagalog. I'll provide the translation in English after afterwards. Ang itakwil ng magulang ay bantang kinatatakutan na kung totohanin ay matinding kaparusahan. Ang itakwil ang magulang ay kasuklam-suklam at para sa marami ay walang kapatawaran. In English, it says, Being disowned by one's parents is a threat that would be punishment that would be a punishment if realized. Disowning one's parents, on the other hand, is abominable and, for many, is unforgivable. Then she continues in English. When people ask where a child gets the audacity to hurt their own parent, do they, ask, do they also ask how vile a parent must be to hurt their own child? I only hope Yulo and his siblings would be the last public figures to be gaslighted by parents who see their children as the future of their family for the lack of a better term. But I digress. And, you know, as long as I'm alive, I'll make sure that no one would experience what... I will make sure that, you know, we'll promote something much healthier than this. And I really hope that Carlos Yulo, if ever he marries Chloe and they would have kids, I really hope that he would break the cycle. I would hope that he would be a good father and Chloe would be a good mother to their children, hypothetically, hypo- hypothetically, but I'm shipping them for marriage, okay? So I really hope that Carlos Yulo would ask the question, be a good father and be better than his own mother. That's the only thing that I can say at this point. So yeah. On that note, I end today's podcast. I would like to thank you all for listening. And even even though this uh, episode is a bit short than the regular uh, episodes. But you know what? It's worth its weight in gold. No pun intended, okay? But you know, uh, I wanted to make sure as well to experiment on shorter episodes like this. Now, the recording of this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify with further plans to extend to other platforms, so please make sure to check out for that. Uh, I'm also on Substack, and I'm also uh, uploading uh, the podcast on Substack. I actually have the um, article version of this, and then I'll just uh, re-upload it as a... as a podcast episode on Substack, so do look out for that. Now, all of the materials I have referenced, I don't know if I did, but uh, uh, I have uh, linked some in the article version. I'll reference uh, it nonetheless. Uh, would be listed, all of the references uh, would be listed in the recording's description or or in the YouTube description or on, or on the Spotify show notes, and it's also hyperlinked on Substack. If you think there are things that I might not have included in this recording, or if you want to have your say about the matter, please feel free to leave them in the comments below if applicable. Uh, there are comments on YouTube. There's also comments on Spotify, if I'm not mistaken. And please also comment on Substack if you wish to do so. Also, before you go, please make sure to like this video and share this around uh, if you're on YouTube. And subscribe as well to my YouTube channel, Intrepidian Rinyon, and ring the notification bell by selecting all so that you wouldn't miss out on with whatever future content I may create. And I please follow me as along as well on Spotify since this is going to be naturally there because it's a podcast and not a video. And uh, follow me as well on Substack because I also publish articles that may have... Del- may have uh, delays recording or may not be re- uh, recorded at all because uh, I needed to uh, say something on the, not really on the fly, but, you know, 
I need to say something without having to record it, if you know what I mean. And with all that said, this is Entrepedia and Rignon reminding you to at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other, and to Carlos Yulo, congratulations on your double gold medal win. You made us proud, and to all the Filipino athlete, athletes in the Paris Olympics, whatever you're standing, you're making us proud. The fact that you are in the Olympics is a win enough. So please be consoled on that. And we're proud of you. That's for sure. From here in Intrepid HQ, see you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. Ian out. Well,